Well, we're waiting. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs> Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Polkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube, wherever you want to download your podcast, the show's always free, and the show will always appreciate your support. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's $150 bucks with any winning $5 bet. So visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on and you can get started today. So yeah, that was me doing Judge Smales from Caddyshack. While I'm talking right now, USC has wrapped up their first official visitor weekend of the summer. Yep, yeah, it's official visitor season. So at the time that this show is being published, so far, uh, no one has pledged their allegiance to USC. In other words, uh, no one's been flashing the Trojan bat signal up in the sky. No social media hasn't uh, hasn't heard the word yet, so to speak. So does that mean it's not going to happen? I don't know. Like I said, the weekend is just coming to an end. And that doesn't mean that news isn't happening. It just means that so far, no one has been super wowed to say, I'm in, I commit. Again, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Over the weekend, USC hosted 11 of the top prospects out there. Two five stars, nine four stars. All right? So uh, the five stars were actually both of them were safeties. You had... Trey McNutt, who I told you about on the last episode of Locked on USC. Pardon me. He was a late addition to this weekend. And then you've known about Jonah Williams, the safety uh, from Texas, who's coming. The four stars, one of them was already committed. Hilton Drake Stubbs, safety. And then he brought along, well, he didn't bring along, but joining them, <laughs> you had linebacker Nathaniel Owusu-Botang, C.J. Wiley, the wide receiver from Georgia, Donovan uh, Olabodi, IMG Academy, Emmanuel Choice, wide receiver out of the state of Texas, Tanu Kynes, wide receiver, state of Texas, Nick Townsend, Aaron Dunn, and offensive lineman from Bishop Gorman, Alai Kalani Uvalu. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, so this is by far going to be the smallest official visitor weekend of the three that are currently planned. So it, let's look at it this way. It's not always about quantity. Sometimes it's about quality, right? Three guys, high-quality guys that USC wants in this class, uh, they seem to really form a really good bond over this weekend. They were seen hanging out together all over the place. If you, again, if you were hanging out, watching social media, looking for notes, updates, anything to kind of, you know, uh, fill that appetite, you probably saw some pictures of... Uh, Hilton Stubbs and Trey, uh, Trey McNutt and um, Owosu Botang, the linebacker. All three of them, they were hanging out a lot together. And I think if you ask Hilton Stubbs his impression from the weekend, you might be surprised at who he thinks USC ends up with. And when I say surprise, I mean that in a good way. Uh, Owusu Botang, he talked about his visit He's actually, he's already talked to, about his visit um, before he left to go home. And you can read the whole interview that he did with Scott Schrader over there at WeRSC.com when you're done making Locked on USC your first listen. But he did say this. Before he commits to his school, uh, he, he had this to say about USC. I'm not going to tell you everything. You can go read the whole story. Uh, quote, I experienced a lot of things. Firstly, I experienced a program that really cares about their student-athletes, development on the football field and off. Not only that, but meeting with the professors and meetings with the coaches, I felt good about my official visit. And yes, I will try and be back for a game day before I commit. Commit to who? <laughs> Speaking of the 2025 uh, linebacker class, uh, linebacker Riley Pettyjohn from McKinney, Texas. 
he uh, he put out his final four list over the weekend. USC, Ohio State, Texas, and Texas A&M. Why am I bringing this up? He wasn't at USC over the weekend. Well, over the weekend, he was taking his official visit to Ohio State. So the timing of his final four, interesting, right? I mean, obviously, Ohio State's in it, you would think. But I'm going to let everybody else know who's in it, too. I don't know, maybe that's his way of doing something on the sly. I Look, he's coming to USC next weekend for his official. And then he's going to finish off his official visits in June. He's going to go to Texas June 14th. And then he finishes it up with a and on June 21st. So we'll see what happens. But I'll tell you what, the Trojans, if they can get a Wosu Boateng to commit, I think he might be the first out of this group. I, I kind of get that sense at least. Maybe it's maybe my gut's wrong. I don't know. I'll tell you what, if we if USC can get him to commit sooner rather than later, before a game day, or maybe on the first game day, like in Las Vegas, well, he can't go to Las Vegas. First home game would be Utah State. Look, um, it would be a huge boost to the recruiting class. And I'm not just talking about class ranking either, because obviously that would jump. I mean, it's another piece of the puzzle uh, kind of coming together on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Nathaniel said he he sees the de- the defensive line that USC, that USC uh, is putting together for their class of 2025. And I, I think everybody... Knew- would agree that defensive back class is off to a really good start. So if Owusu Boteng becomes the first linebacker to commit, I think others would follow shortly thereafter. So again, when I hear more information coming out of this official visitor weekend, trust me, it's going to be right here on Lock on USC. I'm going to be I'm going to be with you all all through the week. I'm not going anywhere. But uh, I do want to give you a couple other recruiting notes before we close out the segment. And this has to do with the 2026 class. Now, you know me. Normally, uh, I like to stay away from the juniors to be until they actually become juniors and are playing in the fall. Uh, however, I, I brought up WeRSCs.com, Scott Schrader. Well, this is kind of an important note. And again, because there's a there's still a chance that he's going to reclassify. However, Scott was told that defensive lineman Jakeem Stewart is going to be at USC on the 18th. That USC is holding their elite camp. And Jakeem is also bringing a bunch of his friends from Louisiana with him. So that's that's a good thing. And because the office of line still matters, I want to make sure I drop this little note, this little nugget. Uh, I saw a message on X, 2026, five-star, opposite tackle. His name's Jackson Cantwell. He's going to take an unofficial visit to USC and Oregon in June also. This young man stands six foot seven and a half. He's 305 pounds. He's from Missouri. He is considered the number one player in the state. And he is number three, considered number three nationally at the offensive tackle position. So this would be an unofficial visit that he would be taking. Uh, USC has their elite camp in two weeks. And then there's also, you know, the elite 11 that's taking place right around that time. So you're going to see a lot of guys coming in from out of town who are going to be hanging out at USC unofficially. Oh, and the other reason why I wanted to bring up this young man, Jackson Cantwell, he's a two-sport star. Uh, Track and field, field events. He does the shot put, and he does it really, really well. Uh, Apparently, he went absolutely huge. I don't know if if this is a big number. I think it is because he set a sophomore national record by two feet. 22.8 meters. And when you do the math calculations, that's 74 feet, 9 inches. Let me be precise. 74 feet, 9 and 3 quarters inches. (laughs) He also had two other throws that went over 70 feet. That'll get it done. I mean, think about this. Dot put, right? 
I, I would imagine he's probably got a pretty good punch at the point of the attack when the D-lines are coming at him in his pass protection. This is the type of athlete you want Josh Henson recruiting, bringing into the offensive line room. Again, I'm going to have more recruiting and official visit season notes as they happen, as they come down. So make sure you're tuning into Locked on USC every day this week, five times. Hit that bell notification button and you won't miss an episode. You like what you heard? I know you did. Become a subscriber if you're not already and smash that thumbs up. All this is going to continue to help the show grow, and I need you to be a part of that. So thank you very much. Now, I think um, this should start your week off on the right foot, okay? You got some stuff coming out of the official visitor weekend. More visitors are coming. You've got elite camps coming up. And because more will be coming this week, um, especially as these players get home, they start to talk to their family, kind of say, "Hey, you know what? Let's 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 talk let's let's talk about what happened over the weekend." That's when you'll the more news and notes will start to come out. So until then, stay tuned. You'll find it all here. I'll have it all for you. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team. They're going to do it faster and they're going to do it for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion, that's with a B, professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. And hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of the small businesses they're going to get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, it's quick, and it's easy. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and even quicker. Post your job for free at linkedin.com forward slash Lockdown College. That's linkedin.com forward slash Lockdown College to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. You know, watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day, you're turning down the volume because everybody's just screaming and shouting. Do me a favor, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. And it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I've got three questions about the running backs as we head into the summer. First question. And maybe you guys have different questions. Hit me up in the comment section. But these are my three questions. Is Woody Marks going to be the last? And what I mean is, is Woody the last running back transfer that Riley needs to bring in going forward? When Anthony Jones Jr. took over uh, the running back room, he took over a room full of Texas high school recruited running backs. The only one he that wasn't recruited by USC out of high school, he's from Atlanta, Woody Marks. He comes over uh, from Mississippi State. So, Marion Peterson, Quentin Joyner, Brian Jackson, three running backs at USC recruited. Woody is now the fourth running back that Lincoln Riley has brought in through the transfer portal. Uh, I think mainly because he felt he needs, wants a uh, running back with a lot of game experience. Remember, Travis Dye, Austin Jones, year one. Marshawn Lloyd, last season. Each one of those guys at one point ended up as the team's main ball handler. Um, so I think you have to say, well, you know what, because of that, that I think that's partially resp uh, why Rayleigh Brown decided, you know what, I'm a running back that they're playing at wide receiver. I'm out of here. I think that's partially why it happened. Uh, now, so you've got three transfers gone. Okay. They're in the NFL. And you have Woody, 
who I think Lincoln Riley plans to use in a similar capacity that he used Die Jones Loy. Eventually, what's going to happen is the question starts to kind of rise to the top from the room, from the players, it becomes part of the discussion. It's, you know, when are the younger guys who are recruited, they're going to start to wonder, you know, when are they going to get a chance to play? Look, if Travis Dye was still on the team, he'd remind, you know, the youngsters that pass protection is part of the job description. So that has something to do with it as well. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Woody is going to be a, he is a welcome addition. And it's going to be even more so um, when USC kicks off their season against LSU in the Las Vegas kickoff classic in Las Vegas. You're going to want Woody out there being starting behind uh, Miller Moss. But again, at some point, I think USC needs to start developing and using the guys that they recruited. And they need to be less reliant on the running back transfers. So is this the last year that it happens? Question number two. Can USC produce a thousand yard rusher in 2024? Okay, I'll throw some numbers, some stats at you that are going to kind of make you go, oh, wow, really? It's been that long. Yeah, it has been that long. USC. Yeah, USC fans, you have to go all the way back to what Ronald Jones did. Rojo. The Texas Tesla. You got to go back to 2016 and 2017 to see a Trojans running back break the thousand yard barrier. He did it on back to back seasons, but we're now what seven, eight years removed? Are you kidding me? We're talking about USC. Keontae Ingram, he came close in 2021. He had 911 yards, but that's it. Now, I'm sure Keontae probably would have crossed that threshold. He did deal with some, some injuries that year. However, um, since Lincoln Riley started doing the play calling for USC, it's his handpicked guys, I, in my opinion, they don't touch the ball enough to pick up the necessary yards. You heard me multiple times talk about how he misused the running game in the, uh, against Utah last year. I'm not going to get started on that, but that's just one example. I think most would agree uh, that USC's backfield hasn't lacked for the coaching, talent, or effort. And I, I and I also agree that if we took a vote, there would be a near unanimous result that the offensive line needs to do better in the run game. But the play calling has played a role too. I mean, look, let's compare the last two years with with uh, Coach Lincoln Riley. Calling the plays. Last year, 2023, when they went eight and five, USC only attempted to run the ball 360 times. 461 times they tried throwing the ball. That's not a big difference. But now, compared to 2022, the previous season when Caleb won his Heisman Award, when they won 11 games, the Trojans ran the ball 473 times. And they threw the ball a little bit more, too, 515 times. Oh, by the way, those additional 113 rushing attempts last um, the year before, they were they averaged nearly five yards per touch. Now, I, I'm keeping in mind that when you have that genera generational talent like Caleb Williams playing quarterback, um, you know, sometimes the running backs are going to, they're going to suffer. They're going to get overlooked. Still, though, um, there was a time, I think, when USC fans probably took for granted uh, that their next featured running back would carve out a 1,000 yards rushing during a season just by putting on the helmet, lining up on the backfield, right? I mean, it's kind of how USC built itself into being known as tailback U, but the game has changed. I mean, think about it. Since Mike Garrett and O.J. Simpson and Charles White and Marcus Allen and even Reggie Bush, when those guys were playing running back, the Heisman winners, well, 
the game has changed. I and mean, it's a little bit more quarterback friendly now. That's why, you know, Carson Palmer and Matt Leinert and Caleb Williams are USC's last Heisman winners. So we'll see. We'll see. Can USC get that thousand yard rusher this year? It's been a while. Third question. What will the uh, carry distribution look like? I kind of alluded to it in the first in the first question. <coughs> Excuse me. In 2023, last year. So as a team, USC rushed for 2,100 yards, 2,118. Lloyd uh, carried much of the load. He's now with the Green Bay Packers. He had 845 yards. Austin Jones, 490. Caleb Williams was third, 410 yards. A lot of that wasn't by design. So now you don't have Caleb Williams running the show anymore, right? I would imagine that the running backs are going to see an uptick in their production, especially if Coach Riley's play calling is a little bit more balanced. After the spring game, um, Coach Riley mentioned how the quarterbacks were going to be used a little bit differently during, uh, regarding their relationship with the wide receivers. My everydayers, you, you heard me talk about uh, talk about that last week. But I think the same question was asked to him about the running backs. This, this is what he said after the spring game. We're going to be just fine there. That's going to be a good room. Excited. I think Woody came in and has been a good leader and a great example for the room. We didn't play him a ton today, but he's played a lot of ball and he's been really good for us this spring. I've talked previously about Quinton. I think Quinton is going to be a really big part of what we do. I really do. I think he had one carry today and he popped it. I tell you, he pops one every day. So he's going to be a really good player. And I think, and and the two young guys, uh, Brian Jackson, he's certainly come along. You saw a couple of touchdowns out of him today. Uh, Marion Peterson ran the ball well. That's a nice room right there. We feel like we can play with all four guys, which I don't know if we felt like that at this point this early. We've got some more size in that room as a whole, which has been a big emphasis point, as you saw today. All four are certainly capable of producing, close quote. So yeah, Joyner, Peterson, they're the next men up, where well, they should be on the totem pole. And Brian Jackson, he looks like he's ready for the college game. I mean, he as well as Marks. You look at Brian Jackson, he doesn't look like he just left high school. But you have to wonder, you know, if the running game is going to be a big part of the offense uh, with USC's move to the big conference, are they going to adapt? Are they going to balance things out now? You got a Marion Peterson, Quentin Joyner. They're heading into their second season. Jackson is finishing his first spring camp wearing the Cardinal Gold. The ceiling for USC's underclassmen is yet to be, to be determined. But, you know, based on the limited opportunities that we've seen, sky high, right? Don't don't put a ceiling on this. Don't put a roof on this house because they're going to break it. The bottom line, when it comes to ball distribution, carrying the ball, it's going to come down to blocking. Yeah. The backs who are willing to do the whole blocky thing will also carry the rocky thing. So that's how it is. I have a feeling it's going to be Woody Marks carrying the brunt of the load. But we'll see what happens. Again, eventually you got to get those freshmen and second year players, redshirt freshmen, got to get them involved. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and Fandle's giving you a shot at bringing home a win of your own. A huge win. Right now, new customers, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 bet. Wow. That's $150 to bet on the point spreads, money lines, player prop bets, and they got more than that. Visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So team captains are typically picked during fall camp, right? But I think things start to develop and you start to find out who your team leaders are 
during the summer PRPs, the player run practices. PRPs are literally going to be starting soon, right around the corner. So who needs to step up and establish themselves as the as the vocal leaders? I'm not worried about guys leading by example, doing it consistently. I, I think that part of the culture in the locker room, it'll it works itself out. It's a really competitive team. But again, who needs to step up and be the ass kickers? The guys that chew people out. The quarterback spot goes without saying, right? Uh, he, Miller Moss has even talked about how he's adapting to his new shoes in that capacity. I think the longer that uh, Jaden Mayava gets uh, more comfortable in his new surroundings, I think he'll become that way too. My initial impression is very soft-spoken, a little, little more introverted. Jonah Monheim, he's the other guy that demands attention, right? <laughs> It goes without question. I want to stay on the offensive line. Here's one guy who I think has it in him to be that vocal guy to kind of step up and say, hey, no, we're going to do it this way. I think it's Mason Murphy. And Gino Quinones, obviously, he's the other veteran. Those guys have to be the vocal leaders during PRPs. Make sure everybody's doing things the right way. Part of the maturation process that I look for when I'm doing my observations is which one of the underclassmen, which one's ready to kind of say, you know what, I'm done being a puppy. I'm ready to go full junkyard dog. I think Elijah Page, Tobias Raymond, they're looking for a little, they're looking for a chance to kind of do a little barking this summer. Test it out. Earn some trust. See which dogs bark back, which ones take a step back. If I'm on that, if I stay on the opposite side of the ball, you know, I'm a huge Jacoby Lane fan. Uh, we've seen him come out of his shell. Yeah. He will be one of the vocal leaders this summer. Guaranteed. And Zachariah Branch, he is not afraid to talk. Remember, he was the first true freshman, all American, uh, to ever speak in front of his peers when he won an award. That happened during this yeah, that happened. Uh, and I'm curious to see who becomes the um, vocal leader out of the running back room. And again, it's really because of how young it is. On the other side of the ball, up front, I need to see Bear Alexander take ownership of his status being the best defensive lineman on the team. Okay. Especially after what went on during spring. Yeah, I know he was dinged up with all that other stuff with NIL and the transfer portal. Yeah, that was a bad look. You got to step up this summer. Go the guys. You're ready to be the leader. When I spoke with Nate Clifton during the spring, he kind of, he showed me, uh, at least in my opinion, um, he has all the attributes to be the guy that, you know, call out the other guys if they're not doing things the right way. And ironically, I think Sam Green, too. <laughs> I've said it before. The best thing about a freshman, next year, they become sophomores. I know one player for sure who will be very vocal this summer, who will make sure everybody is doing what they are expected to do. This is the one time I'm going to use the word expected. Jamil Muhammad, he ain't going to put up with any BS. So he's going to be one of those guys. Uh, Solo, Solomon Tuleapupu. I don't know how vocal he'll be, but if you're not doing what you should be, uh, trust me, you don't want Solo giving you that look. Because if he's looking at you the wrong way, um, it's that look that made Chuck Norris blink. It happened once. So I've heard. <laughs> uh, Braylon Shelby has an outspoken type of personality. I think he could be one of the guys this summer that steps up. Linebacker, Mason Cobb, Eric Gentry, they've got those roles locked down. But Easton Mascarenas Arnold, he's got that personality. Check out his vlog. He's been doing it since he's arrived. Uh, in the secondary, without 
question. Kamari Ramsey, Achille Arnold, they're going to be the starters. So they've got to be the guys. And then returning, you've got, you know, you've got Bryson Shaw, Jalen Smith. Um, they hold themselves accountable. They're going to hold everybody else accountable as well. And then look, you also got Jacoby Covington, Prophet Brown, two guys who have been around the longest. They have every right, and they should be speaking up as often as possible. So that's who I anticipate being the vocal leaders this summer during PRPs. Who do I leave out? Who do you think else? Who else should step up? Who needs to be? Again, I'm not talking about team captains. That all happened in the fall. But if you want to be one, this is where you're going to make your presence known during the summer. All right, there you go. Another episode of Locked on USC in the books. I'll be back again tomorrow with another one. Might even have some more recruiting updates for you. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.